Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by First Paw Coffee Company, specializing in private label premium blend coffee. If you're serious about coffee, you should check it out. First Paw Coffee's passion is high quality, small batch roasted coffee. They take the extra time to taste and get everything perfect before they release new blends. They aim to bring you a cup of happiness each time you pour yourself some coffee. Find out more at ak.dog slash free and enter for a chance to win some First Paw Coffee prizes, a book from our collection and tote bag. One winner will be selected at random each month. That's ak.dog slash free. Hello and welcome to Dog Works Radio. This is Michelle and today we are going to break from our normal routine and bring on my husband, Robert, to host this show with me. For our rabid listeners, you know Robert from his work on Mushing Radio and on most of our interview shows. Hey Robert, how's it going? Hey Michelle, thanks for having me on. Today we're going to talk about the top dogs in United States history, is that right? It is. There are so many important dogs that we are going to break this up into two episodes. On the first one, we're going to talk about Millie Bush, Pal, Rin Tin Tin, Chips, and more. From First Paw Media, sponsored by Alaska Dog Works Professional Canine Training Center in Anchorage, Alaska, this is Dog Works Radio committed to families and their dogs to build lifelong and fulfilling relationships. Visit our website at dogworksradio.com. Now here are your hosts, Robert and Michelle Forto. Michelle and I are going to talk about some of the top dogs in history today. Michelle, start us off. Absolutely. If you've ever taken a high school U.S. history class, then you already know the stories behind the key players in American history, like Benjamin Franklin, Theodore Roosevelt, and Thomas Jefferson. But what the main pages of history books have left out is that behind every major battle and seismic cultural touchstone, you'll find not just historical human figures, but canines as well. From Teddy, the pup who made cinematic waves in a certain technical film, to Rags, the World War I veteran who single-handedly turned the tide of a major Western Front engagement, many pups are secret players behind some majorly important historical events. Herein, we've combed the Dices of History books to bring you the best of the best. Our first dog is Mildred Kerr Bush, or Millie for short, was the pet English Springer Spaniel of former President George H.W. Bush, once referred to as the most famous dog in White House history. Millie first became a part of American history when her dad mentioned her in a speech fighting for re-election. Bush's exact phrasing. My dog Millie knows more about foreign affairs than these two bozos and later sealed her fate in history as a credited co-author with Barbara Bush of New York Times bestseller, Millie's Book. The next dog is Pal. Though the character Lassie was just fictional, the dog that played the famous canine was far from it. Born in 1940, this animal actor's name was Pal, and he, yes he, starred in seven Lassie movies and even a few television pilots before retiring in the late 1950s. Upon his retirement, one of Pal's descendants took over his place from the iconic Lassie, though none of his relatives would ever have the most spectacular canine career in film history quite like he did. Wow, Robert. Lassie sure was a cool dog. Rin Tin Tin was an international movie star in the 1920s with a backstory that could tug at even a cat lover's heartstrings. His owner, American soldier Lee Duncan found him in a French battlefield during World War I and decided to take him back to the States to keep as his own. 
After scoring his first big role in 1923's Where the North Begins, the German Shepherd went on to star in more than 20 other Hollywood films before passing away in 1932. Even after his death, though, Rin Tin Tin's namesake lived on in both Duncan's other German Shepherds, and in television, where shows like The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin and Cats and Dogs aim to capture his essence. The next dog is Chips. Not only was Chips a trained sentry dog for the army who served his country well, but he was also the most decorated dog from World War II. Serving in the 3rd Infantry Division in countries like Italy and France, Chips proved himself a brave soldier when he and his handler were pinned down by Italian hostiles and even broke free to attack the gunmen and save them both. Not to mention, later that day, he assisted in the capture of 10 Italian prisoners. As a thank you for his service, Chips was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross Award, the Silver Star, and the Purple Heart. Unofficially, his unit also awarded him eight battle stars for each of his campaigns, and this year the pup was posthumously given the PDSA Dickens Medal. Wow, that's very cool. So everybody knows who Dorothy is, right? Dorothy might have been the technical star of The Wizard of Oz, but everyone knows the real star of the film was Toto. And though the character has been portrayed by many a canine since 1939, there can only ever be one original Toto. That original being none other than the Carn Terrier, Terry. Even the film's directors must have seen Terry's importance, seeing as they paid the dog's owner, Carl Spitz, a healthy amount for the time, $125 per week, the equivalent of $2,220 in today's money. Hey, Robert, remember our friend Frank? He is a car and terrier. You think he could have made it as Toto? He probably could have. The next dog is a dog after our own heart. Walk through Central Park in New York City and you might just stumble upon a statue of this important pup. In 1925, he served as the lead dog for the life-saving medical delivery from Anchorage to Nome, Alaska, where people were dying of diphtheria. Balto and his team covered the last leg of the seven-day ride to Nome, and by this time, the weather was so bad that the sled driver had to rely on his dogs to navigate. Luckily, Balto pulled through, and the medicine arrived safely in the city, making the dog the celebrated hero. Absolutely fantastic. The next dog is Smokey. Don't be fooled by this Yorkshire Terrier's small size. Though tiny, Smokey's impact on American history was far from it. She served during World War II as both an entertainer, as a soldier, and on several occasions was able to save her owner, Bill wins life by alerting him of incoming fire, earning her honors of bravery. Today, Smokey's memory is honored with a statue in Lakewood, Ohio, near the dog's former home in Cleveland. We're going to take a short break here. We'll be back soon. So earlier you learned about First Paw Coffee Company, and now I'm going to tell you about its Tail Wagger Blend. First Paw Coffee Company's Tail Wagger Blend is their first offering, and its name and label were crowdsourced from their Facebook fans. How cool is that? The Tail Wagger Blend is a private label premium blend that was developed just for them. It is a medium roast from Colombian beans with tastes of Brazil nuts, grapefruit, and oak. Be sure to go to ak.dog slash free and enter to win a bunch of cool prizes. That's ak.dog slash free. Before the break, we learned about some cool dogs from United States history. We have a bunch more to talk about, so get ready. That's right. Sergeant Stubby might sound familiar to you. If he does, it might be because you've seen his animated face plastered on billboards everywhere thanks to the 2018 movie inspired by his story, Sergeant Stubby, an American Hero. 
The patriotic pup served in World War I for 18 months, successfully saving his regiment from several surprising gas attacks and even one capturing of a German soldier by holding him by the pants. Thanks to his heroic efforts, Stubby is the only dog to ever be nominated for rank and subsequently promoted to sergeant. (laughs) Wow, Sergeant Stubby. What kind of dog is he, Robert? I'm not sure. Oh, my goodness. Rags is up next. It's the ultimate wags to riches tale. Originally just a stray dog roaming Paris with nowhere to go, Rags became a war hero when Private James Donovan of the United States 1st Infantry Division took Rags back to the unit and deemed the pup the infantry's mascot. During the war, Rags played a vital role as a message carrier, running notes between the rear headquarters and the front lines to warn the troops of incoming attacks. His biggest role came during the Moise Argon campaign. You have to excuse me, you guys. I don't speak French at all. When the dog managed, despite being bombed, gassed, and slightly blinded, to deliver a message that contained vital information leading to the capture of a fortified French position, the very Epinaville Road, and saved countless soldiers' lives. Bud Nelson is next. Alongside his human Horatio Nelson Jackson, Bud Nelson became the first dog to ever cross the United States in an automobile in 1903. And while Bud may look stylish as ever in his goggles, he actually wore them not as a fashion statement, but because the car that he and his owner took had no roof and was constantly spurting out smoke and toxic fumes. While Bud is no longer with us, his goggles remain on display at the Smithsonian Museum of American History. Wow, seriously cool stuff there, Robert. So, if you grew up in the 1970s or early 80s, you probably watched The Little Rascals or Our Gang on TV after school. If so, you remember Pal. Though today, the illustration of a dog with a circle around its eye immediately makes most people think of of Target ads, Back in the 1920s, such a description would conjure up an image of another dog completely. His name was Pal, but most people at the time knew him better as Petey, or even as Peter, the dog with the ring around his eye. This ring around his eye, which, yes, occurred naturally, made Pal Petey quite famous and even scored him leading roles in such series as Buster Brownins, of course, our gang, later known as the Little Rascals. When Pal died in 1930, his son Pete took over his role as Petey in the Little Rascals, and both pups are remembered fondly as the original circle-eyed canines. Sally Ann Jarrett, or just Sally for short, was the mascot of the 11th Pennsylvania Infantry during the American Civil War. The dog was presented to Captain of Infantry, Captain William R. Terry, while they were training in Westchester, Pennsylvania, and as it was the gentlemanly thing to do, he decided to keep the dog along as the mascot. What Terry could not have predicted, though, was the dog would quickly take on army training, even going as far as to join battles and fight along her fellow soldiers. And in July of 1863, after Sally became separated from her troops, at the first day of Gettysburg, her men found her three days later at their former location, guarding injured soldiers. When the remaining soldiers of the 11th Pennsylvania Infantry erected a monument at Gettysburg in 1890, they were sure to include Sally at the base, keeping guard. Before there was Nemo the Clownfish, there was Nemo, the hero dog of the Vietnam War. 
In the summer of 1965, Nemo was sent out with 40 other sentry dogs to South Vietnam in order to assist the U.S. Air Force stationed there and detect any incoming enemy movement. In 1966, the German Shepherd performed his job well when enemies snuck past the perimeter and he and his handler, Airman First Class Robert Thronberg, attacked them simultaneously. Unfortunately, Nemo was hit in the snout during retaliation, and the dog did leave the battle with one less eye. However, he was deemed a hero for saving his handler's life, and he lived happily as a hero until his death in 1972. Luca, a German Shepherd-Belgian Malinois mix, was a service dog trained to detect explosives. During her six-year stint with the Marines, she was sent twice to Iraq and once to Afghanistan, serving in over 400 missions with zero fatalities. In 2012, Luca was injured by an IED blast, leading to the amputation of her front leg and subsequent retirement, but her efforts were acknowledged by the Dickon Medal for People's Dispensary of Sick Animals and by an unofficial Purple Heart plaque. That's our show for today, guys. On our next episode, we will talk about many more dogs and their role in the United States history. Who is your favorite on the list today? Let us know on our social channels. Just search DogWorks Radio. Be sure to check out our website at alaskadogworks.com. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by First Paw Coffee Company. Learn more at firstpaw.coffee. From First Paw Media, this is Dog Works Radio. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we invite you to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link on the episode notes. You can tap or swipe on the episode cover art, and you'll see some offers from our sponsors. You can support our show by supporting them. If you like what you have heard, we would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe, too. Your hosts are Robert and Michelle Forto. Our producer is Robert Forto and created for First Paw Media. Did you know that Alaska Dog Works trains service dogs for those in need throughout North America? Each and every service dog that is trained through the Lead Dog Service Dog Program and Michelle Forto and her team has an individual training plan. We train for autistic, mobility, psychiatric, and PTSD for our soldiers for service work. If you know of someone that may need a service dog, please take a moment and check out Alaska Dog Works on social media and at alaskadogworks.com.